Hello. Welcome, welcome. How's it going? Um, so we're going to be painting this little gnome friend right here. Um, he's very like non-specific and generic and you get to choose your colors again. Um, so if you would prefer to make this into a Santa because it is that season for you, um, and that is something that you're celebrating and you want as part of your decor, you can very easily make this hat red and make this fluffy and give them some fluffy white stuff. And I'll show you how, I'll probably do like half and half on the hat when we get up to it. It'll be really easy to switch it. Um, you also can, like make your gnome look any way you want. So he doesn't have to have a pink nose. He doesn't have to have a green hat. Um, totally customizable. But this is the friend that we are painting. So for me, I'm gonna stick with like a dark gray background because I think um, that will work with any color that you choose for your hat. Um, and it'll kind of play out the, the salt and pepper beard kind of vibe. Um, now, let me see, I'm gonna get white paint. And I'm gonna need some black paint. And I'm gonna make a mess as usual. I figured out, I think last week I was like, hey, if anybody can tell me how to, like what to do with my bangs while they grow up, I figured it out. Um, when I get out of the shower, I just have to like twist them back. Um, if I wait until my hair is dry, then it doesn't stay. But this way it stays. Um, and also I've been wearing beanies, um, which I never wore before, but it's really good for like when I don't wanna do my hair and I just wanna hide it. So that's those are the two techniques that I've landed upon. I didn't give myself anywhere near enough black paint. Um, so here's the thing, we're not going to be painting the whole background um, because that will just take up so much time and then we have to wait for it to dry. So we're gonna actually do a little bit of drawing. We're just gonna draw the hat um, to kind of get that placed in there and then we'll know everything above the hat. We can, um, we can paint with our background color. So I'm just gonna make some paint soup, which is just when I have a really wet brush and I grab a little bit of black paint and mix it with that water to get it watered down. And I'm just gonna use that to draw. I'm using it on my um, round Spencer brush. If anybody ever clicks on these videos who isn't, um, like who hasn't been watching or who doesn't know me is gonna be like, oh, she likes Spencer brand brushes. I don't even know if that's a thing. Um, Spencer is just what I call my brush, it's his name. <laughs> Um, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna decide how much of the painting I want to be the beard. Um, on a smaller canvas like this, I would say just like a little bit less than half, but I think on a bigger canvas, I want to have more room for the hat. I think the hat needs to be large and in charge. So I'm gonna say, well, that was super uneven, Ileana. Um, there we go. So that's gonna be my hat. And then you can like make yourself a little brim. So this area is gonna be the brim of your hat. You're gonna end up painting over this, but just so that you like have the reference in your, in your head. And then what I like to do is I like to start with like the skinny part and work my way down. You can flop to whatever side you want, but I'm just gonna say, okay, need more paint. Okay, it's gonna go here. And then here, and you can do it smooth like that, or you can do like hard angles. Whatever you think. I think the hard angles thing makes it look a little like a wizard hat, and that's kind of cool too. Um, so you're just making the shape of your hat. And it could be anything. Like I said, if you would prefer to just, you know, smooth it out and Round it out, go for it. And when you see the shape, you could be like, okay, I'm gonna adjust this a little bit. Like that. Okay. It's just to have a little guide to go by. So now, once you've got your hat kind of sketched out. We know this bottom part is going to be the beard, so I'm not going to paint that in my background color. 
I'm going to get my big background brush though and grab some white, just a little bit of white to mix into my black because I want a dark gray. I want to make sure it's definitely going to be distinctly darker than my beard. So, and this can be, you can put, you know, you can roughly mix it so that there's a lot of texture or, you know, brush stroke texture, or you can mix a whole bunch and make it a really smooth background. Totally up to you, whatever vibe you're going for. Oh, thank you. Somebody said my hair is cute in the, um, in the comments. I need bobby pins. <laughs> I can't find my bobby pins, so I just have these little like jaw thingies, but bobby pins would probably be more secure. Also, like, I'm really missing butterfly clips for this purpose. Like, I think butterfly clips would be super cute. Are they back in? Everything else from that time period is back in. Can I have my butterfly clips back? And I'm actually going to switch sides real quick because I want to get this part painted first so that it has plenty of time to dry before I go back in and put my bell. Um, or if you're choosing to do Santa, you can uh, do a fluffy pom-pom there. But I just want this to get paint on it. Okay. As is customary, we're gonna talk TV. I watched, I think I told you guys that I had started The Queen's Gambit, but I finished it. Um, really liked it, way more than I thought I was going to. Who knew that I would like a TV show about competitive chess? It's not about competitive chess, it's really not. Um, but yeah, would recommend. Um, what else did I watch? Oh, I just watched literally all of it last night because there's only eight episodes and they're sitcom length. Um, I watched Dash and Lily. Really enjoyed that. That's on Netflix. Um, I don't know what we're going to watch next. I did watch um, um, Deadpool for the first time. So we have to watch Deadpool 2 now. It wasn't my favorite, but it was funny. That definitely wasn't my favorite. So let me know if anybody else, if anybody has been watching anything else that you recommend. We've been looking for, I, I hate Christmas movies. <laughs> um, my mom loves them though. We don't, we don't celebrate Christmas. Like, at all. Um, but my mom loves Christmas movies. Like she likes the Hallmark ones and she likes the Lifetime ones and all of those. Um, like very formulaic <laughs> Christmas romance things. Um, but I don't love them. Um, and so I feel like I've lumped all Christmas movies in that with the exception of like the Santa Claus and Die Hard. Um, but there's like a whole bunch of holiday movies on all of these streaming things. And I wanna know if anybody has found any good ones. I was going to put Holiday on, but I heard it got really bad reviews. It was like the one with um, Emma Roberts. I heard that one wasn't so great. So we decided to watch Dash and Lily instead, which is holiday themed. It's a TV show, but it is holiday themed if you're looking for for good holiday stuff. Hi, Amy. This shape is really off center, but it's fine. It's fine. We're watching Ray Donovan. Okay, what is that about? You don't have to tell me, I can Google it later. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I um, was a big, big fan of, like big fan, love it of white collar. I'm really excited because they might be bringing it back after like COVID isn't a thing. Um, but 
I thought I was told that because I liked that, that I would also like burn notice. And I tried it and I did not like it at all. Like I didn't even watch more than two episodes, which is weird for me. My, he's a fixer in Hollywood. Okay. 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 So you, you actually didn't need to wash your brush. I just did it out of habit. But once you've got your background, if you've chosen to do a dark gray, you don't need to wash your brush because we're going to go right into the beard. Um, if you did your background another color, then you'll probably want to wash your brush. Um, so for the beard, it's going to be much more white. So I'm going to grab a lot of white on my brush and just a little bit of the gray or whatever you had on your brush from doing your background. And I'm just going to streak it on the bottom. So you don't want to like paint over and over it too much because you really do want that brush texture to show. So I'm just, oops, just kind of streaking it. And we'll put a little bit more like specific detail in there, um, but I do just want like a base foundation of white and gray and black streaky. And what I'm doing is as I work my way to the middle, I'm getting straighter and straighter. So it's kind of angled here and then the lines are getting straighter. And then as I work my way out this way, they're gonna angle the opposite direction. So it looks like a beard that's working its way down. Ask me why I just did that, I don't know. Okay. So I know I said I don't want you to go back and forth too much because I we want um, that brush texture, but I also want you to try not to lay it on too thick because we do want this to dry, particularly the area that's gonna be where your nose is, so like right in the middle. Um, so try to make nice, um, like thin brush strokes. Okay, that's just a foundation, not what it's gonna look like forever. Okay, so now you have to choose what color you want your hat. If it is going to be a Santa hat, I would do red. Um, if it is going to be a gnome, it could be whatever you want, it's your gnome. You get to dress him however you'd like. Um, so I'm gonna try and do like a half and half to show you. Um, so that you can see like what the how to do the fluffy texture for the um, the white part of a Santa hat, but also how you can have to do the the bell and stuff like that. So mine will be a little mismatched, but it's fine. Um, so I'm gonna do I'm gonna do red, um, just because even if you don't make it a Santa hat, I mean a lot of gnomes are red, um, and also because it's the paint color that I have the most of. <laughs> So I'm gonna do red, you know, because it's fiscally responsible. Okay. So I'm washing my brush up because I wanna make sure not to have too much white in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a very thin layer on the hat, the whole hat in just the main color that I'm using. So I'm just doing a thin layer of just red and now it's gonna be it's gonna be transparent. So I'm painting over these lines, but you can still see them through it. But that's okay. Like this is just our base. We just want to get this filled in. Kind of vibe. And now if you're choosing to do this like angular option, um, when it comes to the shade and shadow, um, you can make some really cool creases in your hat, which might be cool, like to make it look like it's... I realize that a sound effect is not a descriptive word. Um, <laughs> I mean, you know when you take a hat, like when you pack a hat in a suitcase and then you take it out and it's all like squished like that.
Whereas with a more of the smooth, like rounded hat vibe, your shadows will be, you know, more swoopy. Do you all see like how I don't ever paint in one direction? <laughs> like I start over here and then I went over here and now I'm over here. Who knows where my mind is. And don't have to worry too much about the lines being clean because we are still going to be going in with the shadow and the highlights and stuff like that. So you'll have more opportunity to clean that up. Okay, I'm going to make this side the smooth side. I just decided that right now so that I can show you the two different ideas here. You do not have to do this. Like, don't make your hat smooth on one side and crunchy on the other. Um, I mean, you can if, if you like what it looks like. But I would stick with the angles and the crunchiness or the smoothness, like that one. Um, just up to you. But I'm going to show you both. And I'm going to fix my, my black background in a second. Clean that up a bit. Okay, so now we just did that thin coat and it's totally fine that it's still wet because we're gonna be just going right back over it with the same color, but just with some black mixed in for the shadow. So I am taking my red that's on my brush and I'm grabbing a little black. The black goes a long way, so you don't need a lot. You just want to darken it. It's going to turn it into like a maroon kind of vibe. And I'm going to first go over that like area where the, the brim of the hat meets the rest of the hat because that would have a crease and that would cause like a little shadow. So we want that definition there. I'm just giving it a little definition there. And then, so the way, whenever there's no light source in a painting, I like to just like kind of use generalization that a light is mostly above somebody. So this part of the hat in my brain is in shadow because it's like on the underside, whereas this side would be highlighted. Um, now, depending on the shape of your hat, if you went like straight up, then you get to decide, but um, that's just kind of where I'm at. So as far as the creases go, you would want to follow the, like if you did this like geometric chunky look, you want to follow the top most line. I'll show you what I mean. So this line right here, You'd want to bring it down because that would cause a crease. And then this one right here would cause the crease there. So you don't want to bring this double crease across. So you don't want to bring this up. This one 
You probably have a crease right there. And then you can take some more red and kind of blend it out. So this is, we're working our way into like a complete second coat of this red. So I'm just kind of adding some shadow here and slowly blending it out with some red. I have a lot of black in my brush. But it's really up to you where you add these, these shadows. Um, they can be really um, strong or they can be really smoothed out. See if I can change the angle of this. Okay, well that's not a helpful angle because I have to hold it like that. Yeah. I just spun my um, my ring light around, so maybe that'll be easier for you to see. Um, but I'm just kind of toning it down and smoothing it out with more red. So this is gonna be where you add your shadows. There's gonna be a shadow right here too. And just add more red and keep it nice and smooth and blended. If that's the vibe you're going for. Okay, so I'm just gonna bring this a little closer so you can see. Like there really isn't too much rhyme or reason. I just wanted to give it some, like some folds. It looks like there's folds. That's probably the, the word I was looking for this whole time is that it, you have some folds. Um, now, if you chose to do a smooth hat, you're gonna do the same thing. It just won't have all these angles to it. So you'll just have some shadow right here, some darker color to whatever you chose for your hat and then blend it out with that same hat color just so it's not like a separate shape. Wow, there's still a glare even without my ring light. Hmm. Okay, now for the highlight, um, you actually get to choose, it'll be based on your, um, on your preferences, but also on the color. So usually highlight is white. Now, if you're doing a red hat and you use a white highlight, it's gonna be pink. That's okay. Um, if that's if that's the color you've chosen, see this side I did the smooth side, so I'm just kind of like smushing a, a pink highlight on there. Um, there's nothing wrong with pink, but if you are looking for another option, you could on a on a red hat you could highlight it with yellow. Um, that would create like an orange vibe. Um, or there is also the option, if you're going a little bit more of a darker and gloomier overall tone, you can, um, you can choose to darken the rest of your hat so much that the pure color is your highlight. Um, it gets tricky with a dark background though, so just be careful. But if I wanted to make my whole hat this burgundy color and then just really make sure that there was a pop of this red as my highlight, that works too. If you are using a different color, um, I mean, it just depends on the color. So like green, you could also use yellow as a highlight. I would not use yellow as a highlight on blue because it's gonna just turn green. It's not gonna make it any lighter. Um, I would not use yellow as a highlight on purple because it'll just turn brown. Um, so it's just, uh, unless you let the purple coat totally dry and then you just want some cool pop art stuff, you know, just a different style. But that's totally up to you. 
I also like to go in, especially with a dark background, I like to go in with like the lightest of lightest colors that I'm gonna use and just kind of go along the top edge to make sure. So I used a lot of white and made a light pink. I'm just going along that outer edge to make sure that it really stands out from my background. You can do that with your inner edge. Um, I would make it a little, a little darker. You can like really lightly kind of just graze just so that it does stand out if you feel like it's really blending in. Um, I don't think that that super duper takes away from the shade and shadow that you've created, um, but it's not necessary. So just whatever your, your comfort level is. Okay, so while that's drying, we're going to work a little bit on the beard. So I'm washing out my big brush and you could do this with your big brush or you could do it with a skinnier like Spencer brush. Um, yeah, I'm gonna actually use my skinnier Spencer brush. Okay, now if you've done other classes with me where we layer color, I usually like to go dark to light. In this particular instance, because we already have some like gradation of grays happening down here, I wanna go light to dark. Um, so, and then we can go, we can go light to dark back to light, you'll see. So I have my clean Spencer brush and I'm going to dip it in the white. Um, Cause I do want this to be like a mostly white beard and then the gray is just like the shadow of it all. Let me put my hand like that so that I can see. Okay. So I've got this white and I'm going to go in and I'm going to press really lightly because I want these like hair like lines to happen. That's the texture I'm going for. So I'm just going to go back in particularly like if there's a very light spot, you don't have to put a, a white line on it, but I'm just kind of going back in again. I'm following that the same directionality. Um, like on the outer edges, they're angled in more and then in the, in the front, it's kind of straight. I'm not going to bother putting stuff over here so much because I know that's where my nose is going to go. And I am going to try to remember to constantly pull down. Not every line goes from top to bottom though. Um, you know, you'll have some shorter whiskery type things. But I'm just going with white and I'm, this area might still be wet. So you may end up with some gray on your brush, so you'll have to keep going in and getting the new clean white. So I'm starting up near the top, the bottom of my hat. I'm just really lightly pressing in order to get that like texture. And like if your line is going two different directions, like this is supposed to be hair, that's totally fine. If you are, no, I'm not gonna say that. I was gonna say if you're doing Santa, you could do it differently. I think you should still do this the same for Santa um, because you're gonna wanna do some fluffy here and here. So I don't wanna make his beard too fluffy either. So we'll keep his beard straight this time. So make sure all of your brush strokes are all different lengths and going in similar directions, but a little bit different each time. And you do wanna go like a little bit up near where you're gonna put your nose because you don't know how big your nose is going to be and I'd rather have the nose cover so it doesn't look like we purposely avoided the area like we're doing.
Okay, cool. So now, when I say we're going from light to dark, um, I'm going to wash my brush off. Even though we're going to paint on the area that has the wet white paint, I'm still going to wash my brush off. And I'm going to get myself more black because we're going to do the same thing but with black. And obviously we're going to do less of it this time because we don't want so much black hair because we don't want it to turn into, like we don't want it to be in competition with our background. Um, but I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to just get some black paint and I'm going to press really lightly and just add some like contrast in some areas. So you may need to like take a look and just squint for areas that are looking like all really like um, congested, not congested. Um, okay, so if you squint and you see like a block of white that's not broken up, you're gonna wanna break it up with some black. So anywhere that too much of the light color worked its way together and just kind of breaking it up with some black. And of course the white you just used is still wet. So it will light, it will soften the black sometimes. And anytime if you like place some black in there and you're like, whoa, this is this is too much. What I just did is I just quickly rinsed my brush in the water and like dabbed it off on my paper towel because I still wanted it to be pretty wet. And then I'm just kind of going over to help that, that going over with that wet brush, you don't want it to be dripping wet, but going over with a little bit of a damp brush is going to really help facilitate the blending of the white and the black together. So I'm just kind of like really roughly going back and softening some of that black. But I'm still keeping with the really like light touch hair like texture that we've been working with. Really light flicks. This is one of the few times that I could encourage you to hold your brush like hoity toity, like, like you're fancy, um, like pinky out. Because <laughs> usually that means you have like very little control over your brush when you're, you know, it goes back to that whole, did you guys have rubber pencils in school? Like if you hold it really, really lightly, um, it just kind of wobbles and then. Um, so this is its stability, so it's the same kind of concept here. Um, so usually I want you to hold your brush like as much like a pencil as possible so that you have the most control. But when it's something like this where we're trying to achieve a specific texture, um, and that specific texture is very loose and organic, like hair, um, you can really just press slightly and hold it really far back. Okay, so now I went a little gray crazy and I want to put more white back in because I want it to have a little bit of that highlight pop. So we did light, we did dark, now we're gonna go back to light. So I'm gonna clean my brush off and grab some more white. And these are gonna, these I'm gonna like be very, I don't wanna say very specific about because I don't want you to spend an hour doing this, but I'm going to, um, use a significant amount of judgment when placing these lines. So I'm going to say, okay, this I want here, I'm gonna break this up. So I'm gonna be a little bit more strategic. That was the word I'm looking for. These are gonna be strategically placed. So right next to, or almost on top of some of this dark gray. I know a lot of times when you're when you're layering, it feels like you're covering up what you just did, and to sometimes you are, um, and that's okay, and that's what that's kind of like 
why layering is a thing in the first place because you put something down and you put another thing down and then you're like, oh, wait, no, I did too much of that one thing. I got to go back to the other thing. That's uh, just how it is. Kind of like when you're making a sandwich, you know, like sometimes you make your sandwich and then you go to put like your mustard on it and you put way too much mustard and you're like, oh, okay, well, I'm not going to throw the sandwich out. I guess I'm going to add more turkey um, because I have more mustard. So this way it carries the, my analogies are flawed, but you understand what I'm saying. So you're going to be using significantly less um, brush strokes this time, but you're going to have more, they're going to each have more purpose. I found, um, I found like science TikTok last night and I got like so enthralled in it. Um, like I was following this one um, science teacher who, what's his name? I think his, his like TikTok name is Renegade Science Teacher. Um, I love him. I want to marry him. I don't know if he's already married. I have no idea. Um, but he's amazing and he talks a lot about evolution. Um, and like the actual legitimate science behind it and why it's not like he had a whole TikTok video he might have done too about why like race is not a thing and it's all just a construct a social construct um, it is a thing that, that sounded wrong race is a thing now but it should never have been an issue because we all came from the same anyway um, same with, uh, he had one for like the LGBTQ community, how people were saying, um, who have like a rebuttal for people who say that, um, same sex relationships are not natural, which I totally do not agree on, but he was saying scientifically, there are many, many, many species, um, many animals that show us that that's not the case, that they have, you know, relations with the same gender and it's like perfectly normal and we're animals so why wouldn't it be normal for us so it was just anyway I digress but I was enthralled with this guy and then I found a, like there was a geologist um and she was really cool anyway I love TikTok it's a problem but I love it it's a problem only because it keeps me up to like 2 30 in the morning until my eyes cross and I like can't actually stay up anymore. Almost there on this beard. Okay, so now the brim of this hat. If you are, if you're doing a Santa, you're gonna wanna take some white and I'm gonna go over the brim like completely. Now, if yours is still wet, you'll definitely wanna make sure that it's dry because whatever color you pick up is gonna change. It's not gonna be white anymore. Um, so you're going to just go in circles. Now with pure white, there, there's no like, you're not going to be able to see these circles, but you'll know they're there. So it's, it's fine. I still want you to do the circles. So I'm making a nice fluffy hat. And I'm going to do the other half differently so that you can see if you don't want to make this a Santa hat. Um, so I'm just doing fluffy, fluffy circles, fluffy, fluffy. This is a bloop. Circle, circle, circles. Some of that was still wet, so now I've got some pink circles, but it's fine. Okay, so circle, circle, circles. And like, I never picked my brush up. I just did like swirly, swirly, and then I moved on to a new area and did more swirlies and never picked my brush up. 
I don't want you to sit there and paint actual circles. They're just like, like this. Um, and then you can take a little bit, just a very little bit. See that? I got mostly white on my brush and I took just a very little bit of black right there. And you can go in and you can do the swirly action. But you want to move your brush a little bit faster because you don't want to have every single swirly, like you don't need every single swirly to be shown, you know? And the faster you move your brush, the quicker it gets like to that lighter gray. Because you don't want black necessarily, there wouldn't be that kind of shadow situation in the swirlies of the hat. And we don't want to get as dark as the beard either. If you do grab too much black and it turns dark gray like the beard, then you're gonna have to layer more. And that's fine. So if that happens, just wash your brush off. Grab some more white, particularly the bottom here where it is up against the beard. You can just grab some pure white and just kind of like loop and swoop, 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 swoop on the bottom. So make sure that it like really kind of differentiates itself. And then you can add some more swirlies into your hat if it got too dark on you. Just those pure white. And you'll have to dip your brush in to get more white pretty frequently, it's okay. So just to look a little closer, just loopy swirlies. Now, if you are choosing not to do a Santa hat, um, you'll want to highlight the hat, highlight and shadow the hat, just like we did the, the body of it. So you'll want to grab some more of your main color and just kind of get some more wetness, wet paint on there. And then for the bottom part, you're going to grab some black to mix in with your color, just like we did here. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that this bottom part is cleaned up and darker, like it's in shadow. So this bottom part, you just wanna make it that like, if you're doing red, it's gonna be that burgundy color, but whatever the dark shade of your color is. And you can even grab some like pure black. You can wash your brush, grab some pure black and kind of pull it down. I would wet your brush for this too, like a little water and some pure black. And kind of pull it down into the top of the beard just a little bit. Just because that part would be darker if your hat is sitting on it. Um, you can do the same over here. So if you did the Santa hat, you can kind of go to the bottom. I've got red on my brush still, but you can kind of go there and just pull a little bit of that dark. Mine is looking purple on the screen because I have red on my brush. But you can put a little bit of your, your beard in shadow because that the hat would be creating the shadow. It's just something to think about. Um, but then after you've created the shadow here, you are going to want to kind of blend it out with some regular red or whatever your color is. Because remember, we never did our second layer of, of red on the brim or color on the brim. So I'm doing that second layer. And then I'm going to grab some white and make that pink highlight and just kind of let that highlight kiss the top of the brim, but not the area that we just did, that we did earlier that kind of creates that separation. So I don't want to paint over that because I want to keep that separation, but I do want there to be just a little bit of highlight attention paid to the top of the brim there. Does that make sense? So we did like shadow here. I just put my finger in that shadow here and then regular red and then highlight, but I didn't go too far over that crease that we already created. 
Okay. So for the little ball on the end of the hat. Now it can be a bell, like this guy, um, or it can be the the fluffy, the fluffy hat. Um, so either way, I want you to start with a white circle. So whichever brush is the right size for you, that's fine. I'm just doing a white circle. Now the reason for this is because if you do decide to do the bell, this needs to, we needed to cover up all of this dark stuff first. Because if we just went right over it with that like lighter yellowy gold color, it would never cover it. So I just did a white circle for now. So everybody who's doing this painting can just do a white circle um, when we get to the finishing touches on it. If you want to make it floofy, you can make it floofy or you can follow along with me while I make a bell. The floofy will be just like, just like this, just like the floofy part of the hat. Um, now for the nose. I have, I've talked about this raw sienna color before. I think I told you guys to try and get some from the fall stuff. Um, if you don't have it, you could just use any yellow that you have, it's fine. Um, but I'm gonna use raw sienna. And this is also, the, that raw sienna is also the color I'm gonna use for the bell. Um, but I've got white on my brush. I'm gonna take a bunch of white. I'm gonna take a bunch of raw sienna and just a little bit of red. The raw sienna, the white, and the red are going to make like a fleshy tone. Um, I'm gonna do a fleshy tone because I feel like if you're doing Santa, he would have, well, actually Santa sometimes has a very pink nose. You can choose. You get to choose what color your skin tone is on anything that I, any painting that we do that represents something that might be like humanoid. You you pick whatever skin color you want. Um, this is like a fleshy, this looks white on screen, but this looks very much like my skin color. Um, I could probably use this as foundation. Pretty good color match. Um, anyway, so I'm going to do my nose in this color and see if I like it. It's just an oval, just a big oval. Now, if you're doing a gnome and you want it to be like a silly color, that's fine. If you're doing a Santa and you want it to be a more pink color, you can absolutely add more red. That's all it would really need. So I just grabbed some more red. I can make this a little bit more pink. And you can do a combination. Like I might just leave that where it's like two-toned. You can't see that. There's a glare. Um, hold on. So I did mine a little more flat, like my nude, my flesh color, and then I added a little pinky on top, like, um, you know, he's cold, so that's kind of cute. But you get to choose your nose color. I do like the idea of putting a little shade and shadow in there. Um, and now that could be like on mine, I use black and white. Um, that would absolutely work no matter what um, color you've chosen. So I can just go in and Kind of add a little black down here, which would gray it out. So I don't want to go all the way to the bottom because I want to keep it separate from the from the beard. I could have also chosen to do more red down there, but I like I like what I chose. And then I'm gonna grab some white and just kind of add a little highlighty pop to the top of the nose right there. I think I went a little overboard with that gray on the bottom. Let's see if I can. Yeah, just tone that down a little. Okay. 
Okay, I like it, I dig it. I realize this looks dumb. I'm, I'm, I, if you chose to do fluffy hat, do the fluffy hat all over. If you chose not to, then do the other one all over. If you did half and half like me, I'm sorry if I didn't explain that properly. <laughs> um, just choose one. I mean, I guess your hat could be half and half, but I would just choose one. I know it looks silly, but I just wanted to be able to show both ways of doing it. Um, you can also, if you feel like you need it, like maybe I'm looking at it now, and since I went with a lighter color for the nose, there's not as much like tonal separation between the beard and the nose. So I can take a little bit of black and some water and just make some paint soup and just kind of put a shadow under the nose. If you feel you need it, I can actually take your finger and pull it down. I'm a big fan of finger painting in case you haven't been here for any of the times I made people finger paint. <laughs> um, but yeah, that just kind of separated the nose from the, from the hat. I mean, you could do that too. You could put a little shadow around the nose. You know, whatever you need. Okay, so for this bell, if you are not wanting a belt and you're wanting it to be floofy, you're gonna do the same thing you did here. You're just gonna kind of like floof it out, make it irregular, don't make it, don't keep it a perfect circle, make it a little lumpy and bumpy, and then go in and add a little bit of gray to break it up. If you want the bell, I'm gonna to say to grab your yellow. If that is the, um, the raw sienna, the peanut butter kind of color, then you're just gonna use that straight on top of the white. If your white is still wet and it mixes in a little bit, that's absolutely fine. I'm just gonna put this over. Now, if you only have a yellow, I'm going to suggest taking your yellow and mixing a little bit of red into it to make it a little bit more orangey, just a little tiny bit. Um, will make it just a little bit like brassier and a little bit more toned down. Cause that is, if we're doing a bell, like we're looking for that brassy color. Alternatively, if you happen to have metallic paints, I have them, but I'm not gonna make them a requirement. Um, you can paint this with metallic paint and that would look really cool too. But we're just gonna put a layer of whatever shade of yellowy gold you can make or that you have or that you like. And then I'm gonna grab a little bit, just a little bit of black and swoop underneath wherever you think the shadow would be, like the, the bottom part of your bell. Just play the bottom of our bell in shadow. And then I'm gonna wash my brush. And just like we've been doing with the shadow, there's always a highlight. So I'm gonna grab some more white this yellowy color is still wet, so it's gonna soften the white, which will be really nice. It's not gonna be that harsh highlight. And I'm just gonna swoop that along the top of the bell. You can always take some more of your yellowy gold color and tone it down if you need to. And then the very last step is going to be the little like the holes in the bell like the jingle jingles i realize a bell is also like this shape but you know the kind of ball jingly things i'm talking about um so i'm going to just take some black paint i'm going to do a little circle of black paint in the middle of my bell and then i'm just going to pull a line down to the edge and that kind of creates, so just a little circle and then pull a line down. You can like swoop it a little bit if it's on an angle. And this is, this is really like pretty rough and painterly, but you can see what I did there with the, the shadow and then the highlight and then the little bell detail. And that's it. And that is all she wrote. So I know mine looks silly because I was showing multiple different ways of doing things, but I can't wait to see yours. Um, so please um, put them on Twitter if you feel comfortable. Tag me. You can use the hashtag quarantine creatively. Um, 
but I want to see them. <clears throat> and I'm excited. So thank you guys for joining me, whoever was here. And if you caught me later and you're watching this recorded, I appreciate you as well. Um, I saw when I logged in here that I have 130 subscribers. That's wild. I didn't know that. Didn't know 130 people cared. So I do appreciate that. And um, I just realized how bad it looks that there's like a candle under the note when it looks like we're trying to melt him. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys next week. Bye.